Hey, Eric plays bass here, doing the thing in my name again. And today we are checking out one of my favorite fuzz pedals of all time. One of the things that made me fall in love with fuzz for the first time. And I happen to have a pair of them, which is amazing. This is the Maleco Barker Ass Master, also called the Bass Master. And I always call it the Ass Master, because how cool is it to own a pedal with Ass Master in it? <laughs> and uh, I recently, within the last few months, bought the second one, which is this really awesome kind of, I think they call it root beer finish, yeah, white and root beer. And I originally had this one, I've had this one for a number of years now, I bought this used on eBay back when these were affordable. And this one, I say back when they're affordable, because you might be wondering why well, I can go out and buy one now. Well, you can't buy this one. This is the germanium version with the little blue LED here to indicate that. It's hidden too, which I thought was really cool. Um, of course, the modern bass masters, ass masters, are this color scheme, but with a actual LED out in the front, and usually they're red. Uh, this one is white with the whole white and a cola color scheme going on but these are both different beasts in many ways and so the comparison isn't going to be totally fair between them but I'm going to do my best to kind of show you what each one really does and uh, maybe by the end of this we'll conclude that you really just need to have one of every ba uh, bass master out there <laughs> gotta have one of each ass right <laughs> one of each type um, but yeah, again, this is the germanium version, which doesn't exist anymore. They don't manufacture this one at all anymore. And this was a limited run, but with current production specs. And what I mean by that is it has the silicon uh, transistor, resistor, not too schooled on this, uh, but it has the silicon diodes or whatever instead of the germanium. And that does affect how the fuzz works. Um, and in general, if you're not familiar with this fuzz, it's built off of the old Maestro Brassmaster. But if you want to get an original Maestro Brassmaster, we're talking, you know, well over a grand for one of those. All Maestro, vintage Maestro pedals are just going way up in value because they were really cool and pretty rare. Um, and also just, I think they're just hard to come by in general. Hence the scarcity and the, and the value. But for my money, I'd much rather get a clone of pretty much any vintage pedal nowadays because you're going to get something better made with a warranty and made by current people who you can call if you ever have a problem. Um, now, I will say with Maleco, I've tried actually messaging them, and maybe I didn't have the right contact info, but I was trying to get more info out of this guy, and I wasn't able to get it. Uh, but I'm not sure. that I tried to use the contact form on their website, and I never got a response. So... <laughs> Having said that, in general, though, you can do a lot of, a uh, lot better with buying a modern clone of something, which is usually, honestly, better than the original. And I would put these over the original Brassmasters, absolutely. They are different, and even the manufacturers have said on record, like, every, every Brassmaster they tried was different, a little different, hence probably the varying components that they used back in the day. A lot of surplus stuff that wasn't always available. And, you know, I'm talking a lot, so we should probably just hear what these pedals sound like at this point, right? <laughs> so I've got uh, everything hooked up. My Sarek Midwestern 2. I'm using the P position, the B90 position, uh, just straight into the first one, the Germanium one. Um, their pedal order, I haven't found any difference in order, but I figured I'd put the Germanium first because this one retains your low end. This has the low frequency mod, or low freak mod, F-R-E-Q, which helps retain all your low frequency information. It also has this X here, which stands for the expression input that I have. I'm not using that. You can see the jack for it right here, and the funky little uh, number two there. And then it's going into my Sonic Research Turbo Mini Tuner because you got to be in tune. Um, and then off screen is my uh, Empress bass compressor, Mark II, and the uh, Trickfish Minnow. So my clean tone. And let's uh, begin. I've kind of put them at what I would consider neutral position. Actually, I'm going to gas this up a little bit. In the manual, which is uh, notoriously a little... Uh, what do you say, uh, cryptic <laughs> and on purpose. 
I guess on there I have actually a post from Maleco on Talkbase dating back in 07. They uh, say our instructions are modeled after old Roland manuals written by engineers that know nothing about music equipment and don't speak English, part of the heavy industry theme. And yeah, if you look up the manual, it's uh, a lot of broken English and like question marks and stuff like, I don't know what you do with this pedal, figure it out. And that's what we're going to do. So let's start with the Germanium Ass Master. I can't, can't get enough of saying that. So it's a very uh, kind of synthesizer idea pedal. Um, I mean, these were marketed as bass pedals. It was, the, it was the Brass Master back in the day, and it was meant to make your bass very mid-range loaded, which, I mean, you can hear the mids are just, they're just right at you, cutting your, you know, cutting your throat, basically. Uh, but that's the whole idea. Your the brass would cut through the band, and you want to cut through the band as the bassist, as the famous... Uh, demo for these like they, they had a little like i think a flexi disc or something demo you can find it on youtube it's hilarious he says hey give the bass man some <laughs> and it's just this horrible fart noise but it's it's a lo it's lovely and amazing all at the same time so uh, the sensitivity controls kind of the saturation of the fuzz uh bass volume is the volume of the bass which if i turn the ass volume which is the the distortion volume all the way off you'll notice it's still dirty. It adds even just the clean blend is not clean. So that can create some interesting ideas. I'm turning the sensitivity up, but there's no ass volume. Good for your overblown tube thing. Probably could EQ it a little differently, but um, so let me turn this back to a normal-ish setting. Um, actually, let me put the. I think I had the opposite of what I wanted. The ass volume at about 11, the bass volume about noon. There we go. Heavy, but as soon as I lay off, gated. It's great. So the harm switch is uh, harmonics. And then the ass switch is ass. <laughs> no, it's, uh, what do they call the ass switch? Let me uh, reference it here. They say the ass toggle basically switches the resistance on the twin T filter so they are at two... Two points of the spectrum. I know exactly what that means. <laughs> but here's what it is off. And then back on. So usually I find, at least with this one, I leave everything to the left. Um, it's just that in-your-face, beautiful fuzz. So yeah, a lot of fuzz. And the pretty decent low-end transfer, but definitely not as much. Now... I have everything down on this one. This is the silicon one with the low freak mod and uh, a lot more low end. So let me turn this to the same settings. Mind your volume here at this point. I'm going to have it in the same exact settings as the, uh, um, as the germanium one. Noon is not unity gain. Just let me make sure you know that. So here's a... Uh, Germanium. And here's the silicon with the low freak mod. <laughs> it's crazy. 
Uh, usually I keep the sensitivity on this one a little down further here, and then we'll uh, you know adjust everything to taste. But yeah, keep the bass volume there. Keep this at about like let's do let's do like nine thirty, ten thirty. How about that? how this handles harmonics. Such a such a cool thing. So how the harmonic um, deals on this one. It's like bells. I should probably mention at this point too, or I should have mentioned it earlier, uh, with the Cyric, this has Tomastic Enfeld flat wounds on it. So harmonics don't quite ring through the same as rounds, but I get a lot more, you know, no string noise. Which does help with tracking on octaves. And these are kind of octave fuzzes. I do find them to still operate well with round wounds, of course, but you know, when I'm using an octaver, uh, like my, my octave from Three Leaf Audio, flats help it track a lot better so i feel like you get more of just the characters of the of the pedals here than if i was using rounds which would introduce even more harmonic content um so that was the harmonic switch and then let's mess with the ass switch things you can do with you just your volume now add more of the ring mod characteristic So I'm, now I'm going to do a little side-by-side -side thing just to kind of give you, you know, back and forth between them. Let's uh, go back to the germanium, keep it where it was. And um, I'm trying to think of some famous Brassmaster pedal sounds. I know there was a either like a cactus or like vanilla fudge tune or something. I think it was a cactus tune. I can't remember what it was or how it goes, but I, I'm pretty sure Larry Graham used a Brassmaster, at least at some point. So let's uh, let's try a little the Earthquake riff. How about that? And I'll switch back to the J position on this thing. So that's the, uh, it's not a jazz bass sound necessarily. More like a Rickenbacker, but kind of my J bass sound as well. So we get more of a Larry Graham tone. All right, here's the, here's the germanium. should be the same. Hopefully the volume. 
about the same. that's kind of about it um you could i could go through the whole range and have like a loop playing and everything and you know really go through the range of each knob but this gives you a general idea of the characteristics and why you might prefer one over the other especially after 16 minutes now so and kind of was inspired like a zach riser moment i suppose where i just want to do a single take comparison between some pretty fucking cool pedals so let me know what you guys think uh give me any feedback you can on this video I don't have any video editing software or nothing like that, so I figured I'd make the best one-take video possible. And I know this wasn't it, but hey, I'm always trying to work at it. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to hear more bass, I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ericplaysbass. And you can probably request to hear these pedals or maybe more if you come on by. Hopefully see you soon. Take it easy out there. <laughs>